Okay, today we're going to be talking about the Ford 340 industrial tractor. Now this, don't confuse this with a 340A and a 340B. Those two tractors are completely different. This tractor was only made for a very short period of time, less than two years, because it has a number of uh, factory defects that we're going to cover today. First of all, the primary shifter. The primary shifter has a problem with the pin down in the bottom of it, down in here, that you have to fix. Otherwise, the thing will just spin around in circles and go side to side. So if you can catch that early and fix that, you'll be up on the top of the game there. Next thing to check is the joystick for the hydraulic for the front end. The arm for this hydraulic is really, really heavy, and they didn't put any grease fittings in here, so this thing just wore out almost immediately, and you can't get them anymore. I paid $220 for this one. I drilled and tapped and put two grease fittings in it, and then had to make a new pin for it. So this is usually one of the first things to go. The wiring on this thing has a bit of a problem. The wiring goes up over the gas tank and underneath the shroud and goes to the instrument panel. Well, the wiring rubs on the gas tank, shorts out, and catches on fire. This one's already been on fire and I've already fixed it. Uh, the uh, steering rod. The steering rod right down there, you can see the tie rod end on it. Goes up through there, comes up. And there's another tie rod end right there. That one's the one I made. The original one is junk. Uh, it didn't last. It's over here. This is the original one. You can't get it anymore. And they just wore right out. And uh, they just had plastic in there holding that tie rod end in there. And they just wore out, literally fell right out. The tie rod end suffered the same fate almost immediately. You got the one on this side and the one on the other side. I've replaced them with some heavy-duty tied rod ends. If you look up the original part number, you can still get one from one of the aftermarket companies, but they're another thing that failed almost immediately. The spindles. The spindles are another big problem. On the spindles, on the thrust bearing, they use roller bearings instead of ball bearings. And if you look at this spindle, that thing is junk, and I mean junk. They failed almost immediately. If it was just a tractor without a front end loader on it, they would last a little while. But as soon as you put some weight on it, they failed almost immediately. Even the bearings on this thing just spun right out. I had to make new ones, which cost me about $1,200 because you can't get those anymore either. And I got lucky on that one. Um, the grease fittings on the spindle is another big problem. Right there, you can see where the old grease fitting was. Well, you have to put almost a whole tube of grease in there for it to get to the bushings on the upper and lower bushing there. Otherwise, you, you can get any grease on them. So to solve that problem, I drilled the thing out right in the middle of the bushings and put two grease fittings in there in the upper and lower. You solve that problem, one little pump of grease, they're greased. The rims. This is an industrial tractor, not a farm tractor. This tractor came with solid welded rims, not movable rims, but they rusted out pretty rapidly. The problem is, is the centerpiece of that is a lot thicker than most of your farm tractors. It's heavy. But I've seen a number of these on the internet, just pictures of them, where they have replaced this rim with a farm tractor rim, which is a power adjust rim or removable or whatever. That would not be the original rim. So if you see rims other than the solid welded rim, somebody's already replaced them. The front rims, they had a small problem right at the factory coming right down the line. The tire just barely misses the steering arm. And this is on the left side. On the right side, it hit it completely. It ran directly into it coming right down the line. They weren't aware of it. So what they did at the factory is they went and took and turned the rim around and put it on backwards. Well, the problem with that is it put all the pressure on the lug nuts. So as soon as you put a front end loader on here or put some pressure on it, the hub would just fail, which this hub's already been replaced and I put all new studs and everything in it. Uh, but 
I ended up having to make an offset rim for it, which is what they should have done to begin with. So I made this rim here. I took the center part out of the old rim, bought a new rim, took the center out of that, welded the old center in it and fixed it. And this is the old center right here. And the, the center part here was just spot welded in there all the way around. So all I had to do was drill out those spot welds and I was able to just knock that center right out and replace it. This thing has what's called an Obertrol on it. And it's part of the steering system. You can see it up in there, the hose is going into it. That has a series of rings in there. I can't remember, five or six O-rings that failed right away. But there's a rebuild kit for that. It's an easy thing to fix. You just got to be careful with it. The fuel tank screen, there's a fuel tank screen that sticks up down in the bottom of the gas tank. You can't see it in the picture here, but it fell off. So I had to take the gas tank off and get that out of there. Uh, the loader itself has a few problems. One major one is the welds. If you look right up in there, I've got the paint all scraped off of that because it has to be re-welded. It's a cold weld, didn't attach to the arm at all. And the same on this side. Exactly the same problem. Nice cold weld, didn't attach to it at all. And this is the brace that keeps you from breaking your arms. So you need to get that fixed as soon as you can see it. Uh, there's no glow plugs in this engine, so it's not much for starting in the winter. I usually take a hair dryer and just blow hot air right into the uh, intake there to start it up if I want to start it up in the winter. I don't see very many of these things. I've been to a lot of tractor shows and I've never even seen one of these at a tractor show. So if you're lucky enough to get one of these, go and check out all these problems. If you can get all them problems fixed right away, you'll have one hell of a tractor. Another thing to point out is if you ordered this from the factory with the 745 loader on it, it came with the flat top rims. So if you see one of these without the flat top rims on them, it'll have clamshell rims on it, but it has a loader on it. It did not come from the factory with that loader on there or somebody's replaced the rims because that's the only way you could get the, uh, or someone replaced the fenders because that's the only way you could get the flat top fenders if you ordered it that way. And as you can see on this one, I have a Kelly B15 backhoe on here, which works quite nicely with this unit. This unit has a uh, ability to have three individual uh, hydraulic pumps on there. One's on the side, which runs the backhoe now. The one's on the front for the front end loader. And down in here, there's a separate plate where you can actually put a third one on there. I've never seen that before either. That's a new one on me. And then last but not least, on the diesel models, there's a little pin right down inside there with the return line for the diesel fuel if you have a diesel. That was supposed to be soldered in there and it, it was soldered but not well enough. So it, the diesel fuel ran down the back side of it underneath it and came down outside the gas tank or the fuel tank there and dripped out on the ground. I took some JB Weld and fixed that in about five minutes, no big deal. But other than that, that's your Ford 340 industrial tractor. And hope you enjoy the video.